Okay, let's use your knowledge of what value is to turn a circle into a sphere. First thing you need to do is draw a circle on your paper. Make sure your line is very, very light. It should be a number one value. If you have something to trace, great. If you don't, you'll do what I'm doing. Then put an imaginary table line down like it's, we wanna make it look like it's sitting on a table, okay? It's not at the very bottom of the circle drawing, it's up a little higher. The next thing you need to do is decide which side of the paper your imaginary light source is coming from. I'm going to decide that mine is coming from over here and I'm gonna put an arrow it right here for you, but you don't have to put the arrow in if you don't want to. That way you know what I'm doing. I'm only doing the arrow for demonstration. Pretend that this is a sun ray or something that's gonna be hitting the sphere right here. If the light source is hitting your object, whatever it is, right here, that's where it's gonna be the lightest. It's gonna be darkest directly opposite the light source because the light can't get at it. That means when we apply our value scale to this drawing to make it look like it's a three-dimensional sphere, the darkest part of the value scale needs to be over here on this side of the sphere. And the lightest part of the value scale, the number one value, should be over here, all right? Remember when we filled in our value scale, the number five value was over here as well. It just is coincidental, okay? But it was a smooth transition to the number one value. We're gonna add five values to this sphere as well. And we're gonna start with tonal cross hatching. We're gonna fill in the circle. And you know, actually, I'm gonna to say to you that your lightest value should probably be for this. Your lightest value in life when you draw it is not always gonna be a number one value. It just depends on the object. And for today, your lightest value, let's say, is going to be a two or a three, all right? All right, now, once you do that, you're gonna use your blending tortillion to smooth that out. You're gonna use the side of it as well to do tonal cross hatching. You're not gonna grind your graphite into the paper. You're not trying to make your pencil strokes disappear. We wanna see them, it's tonal cross hatching. What you're trying to do is spread the graphite around between the pencil strokes to make your life a little easier. All right, so now you can see that because I used a very, very light outline, a number one value, and because my value of the circle is like a number two or a three, depending on who you are, the outline isn't too noticeable, which is a good thing. I'm gonna start over here and add another value, all right? I may not have to add five values, especially since I'm starting with a number three value. Now, you want the value to wrap around this object because the object is roundish. You don't want to make stripes going like this, all right? If it was a cube, that would be one thing, but it's not. Now, you can see already that it's getting a little darker, and that's good. It's not a drastic change, and that's good too. We want a smooth, gradual transition of value. All right, I'm gonna add another layer. Starting again where I want it to be the darkest. Now each time I add a layer of value, that layer of value goes up a little bit, but it doesn't completely cover the previous layer of value. Feel free to move your paper around so that you're more comfortable with your drawing technique. The more layers of value you add, the better your drawing is gonna be, all right? Now, I showed you a value scale of five. And you know, you could have a value scale of 100 if you wanted, or more. Just depends on the drawing you're doing and what the object looks like. I'm now adding another layer of value.
And you need to keep watching this video because I'm also going to show you how to put a cast shadow in, which is part of your requirements for this assignment. Now when I get back here, I'm getting really close to the edge of my drawing, so I may have to come up on the tip of my pencil instead of using the side of my lead. And that is actually just called plain old cross hatching. And you, you know, a lot of artists like to use cross hatching with ballpoint pens and things like that because it gives it a nice texture. They like their drawing strokes to show. Okay, I think that honestly, I would, I could do a lot more with this, but I'm gonna let you guys um, do your own work. I would really like to see this whole thing be darker. And I'll t when I'm done, I'll take a picture of it and then I'll add it so that you can see what the end product looks like. Um, in real life, what I would be doing is I would say, okay, I've got like four or five values on here. Now I'm gonna add another layer and I'm gonna fill the whole thing in with a little bit more and add all those other values again, like another layer of everything, okay? Now, way down here, it's probably gonna be a little bit darker than the rest of the darkest value because it's touching the table. And the light, not only is it hard for it to get over here, but it's really hard for it to get down here. And that is where the cast shadow needs to be touching the object. The cast shadow is always opposite the light source. And your cast shadow should also have a value scale in it. I'm gonna say you need to give me a value scale of at least three. The darkest part of the shadow will be touching your object. Okay? That's it.